Ladies and gentlemen, the FIO BTA30 Bluetooth transmitter and receiver, or as I like to call them, Bluetooth transceivers, because it will do both. So on the front panel, we have on-off control, we have a pairing button, in the middle we have the mode switch that will go between receive, transmit, and DAC, and then we have a variable output or a volume control, I dare say. Okay, on the back of the unit, towards the left, we have analog output via RCA left and right, which are appropriately labeled and colored. Very good. Optical output, coaxial input and output, depending on whether you're using this as a transmitter and receiver. Optical input, uh, there's your SMA connector for the antenna, and then our USB-C port. This is not a charge port. This, uh, this unit is not self-contained, does not have a battery in it, so it needs power. So you're going to have to have USB. Also, not only does this provide voltage to the unit, but it is signal, signal source from your computer. So you can plug this into your computer via your USB and take files from your computer and use this as a DAC and plug this into your home stereo. So it's a great way to interface between your computer and your home stereo. Or you can use this as a Bluetooth transmitter and transmit uh, your Bluetooth music files uh, to say another receiver in the house or maybe some Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker. I have done all three and it works very well. I really like this feature a lot to be able to use the, uh, the digital input. Okay, so I've had a lot of folks ask me to review this. I've had this unit now for a couple months and um, I'm really liking it. I like what it does. At first I was very hesitant in even doing it uh, because I could see on my Amazon uh, influencer page that people were ordering these and they were being sent back and then I watched that disappear for a while and I wasn't sure if maybe that was a design flaw or maybe FIO had a bad batch or something but I have not seen any of these being returned so I decided to pick one up and give it a shot. I'm not going to give you all the particulars as far as all the numbers go. I'm going to I am going to tell you that it's supported Codex or Aptix X, uh, Aptix X HD, LDAC, and AAC. Yes, I have tested this extensively with Apple uh, cell phone and with my old school Samsung cell phone, and it works uh, just fine. So really, uh, it, it it does what it's supposed to do. The only thing that I could not get this to do was I could not get this to work with the app. Apparently there's an app for this that will let you adjust some equalization and do some fancy things with it, but I couldn't get the app to work. Maybe my cell phone's too old. I'm not really sure. It's only about three years old or so, so I'm not really sure why the app didn't work. Um, I've seen other people complain about other things with this, but honestly, I think that could be user error. And I got to be honest with you, I did not want to like this piece of gear. I was like, I don't know, man. It, it, it's not doing anything for me. It's kind of a plasticky case, right? It's not really heavy duty. It's not like the, it's not like the uh, the iFi Audio Zen and all that kind of stuff. But it's very compact. And I thought, wait a minute, I have a possible use for this, and uh, I'm gonna order one, and we'll see. I think this came in at about eighty-eight dollars. I think is what I paid for that. I'll leave a link to this down below. But um, yeah, it works in the house. I get really good range with this. Um, it comes with a 42-inch uh, RCA cable. It comes with a 40-inch USB-C cable. There is no AC adapter that comes with this. Um, it does have a user guide, and it came with a little card with four stick-on pads, little rubber feeties, I call them. But this already has them on it. So I got four extra feeties. Maybe I'll use that for that little my pin unit that scratches everything up. Anyway, it's a receiver transmitter. It has no runtime because it is not battery operated. So as long as you feed voltage to it, five volts that is, it will run. You just push the on off switch, hold it, and uh, it will turn on and off. You push and hold the pair button, that will turn on and off. Um, we have the mode switch here in the middle. And you have to be careful with this because if you say wanna go from DAC to transmitter, sometimes you can overshoot it with this little switch and go to receiver like I just did it right there so you kind of it's kind of a two-finger deal um, no big deal uh, variable uh, preamp level output which I really like in fact um, that was one reason why I bought this to do the test with 
So real quick, most higher end Bluetooth devices like the Audio Engine, the Blue Dento, the uh, Zen Blue, um, gosh, a bunch of others. I just can't name them all. They come with a preset rough, roughly a two volt RCA output level, which is somewhat standard nowadays. And um, I really like that. But this will actually output up to three volts RMS. So that's kind of nice. So let's just say uh, on your home stereo receiver, your volume control, let's just say hey, this is your master volume control, and this is like loud on your home stereo receiver, like whether you're listening to FM tuner or your CD player or whatever. But then you put a device on that has a low preamp level out, you have to turn it up to like maybe halfway to get the same volume you would have to uh, on any other your other components. Well, I like this hot three volt output because this is about equal to my iFi Zen and my audio engine and my Blue Me and my Blue Dento and all that. About, about what, three o'clock position will give me about two volts RMS output, which is no problem. However, I can drive those a little bit harder. I can drive uh, my old Marantz receiver a little bit harder. I really don't need to. However, I do have a, uh, an old Technix SA808 that's a little deaf on auxiliary. So I actually run this about right here. So if you have kind of a deaf receiver, um, this will be the unit for you to have, in my opinion. I think this gives you just that little bit more preamp level output and uh, it'll make kind of a deaf receiver happy. Also in a pinch, you could use this for your headphones. Meaning if you got a, let's see, 3.5 millimeter female to male RCA, you plug the RCAs in here, you plug your wired headphones into that little uh, 3.5 uh, millimeter female plug, um, you can use this as a volume control. And so maybe this will give you more output. Like if you're streaming from your uh, cell phone, which I've done, um, you'll get a little bit more volume. Maybe you want, maybe your cell phone's a little shy on output level. Um, and most of them kind of are. They, they're they like really set for like super low impedance. So keep it under about 50, 75 ohms on this one. And you're going to get pretty good um, preamp level output, which is kind of neat. I like that. You can also play around with it and utilize the DAC. Plug this into your laptop and um, uh, listen to your headphones through here. It might sound a lot better. Actually, it does on mine. In my, my use, it did. I used this quite extensively for a couple months. Okay, so here's the real reason why I was really interested in this. I knew it had a, um, an advertised rating of 3 volts RMS output. I wanted to put this in with my car stereo. I have an elderly, about a 15-year-old um, Alpine, what is it, a 9857, I believe, receiver head unit, and it has auxiliary input. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to use the auxiliary input. The, um, the auxiliary input's a little deaf, though, so I wanted this extra bump up in uh, preamp level voltage and uh, to get the right match to it, the right output level, and this worked exceedingly well. So that works really well. I have a extended range Micus antenna uh, tucked way up in my dashboard with a little extended cable that's about, uh, what is that, about four foot long. So I plug that into here. I have a little um, uh, 12 volt to five volt power supply card back behind my dash, uh, double stuck to the back of my Alpine. So I can get 12 volts from my ignition and then plug it into the USB-C here. So I've got my external antenna, I've got my power, I've got my RCA analog output hooked up to the auxiliary input of my Alpine head unit. And I'm telling you, man, I got Bluetooth 5.0, 5.1 in my truck. Old school head unit with a great sound with this uh, extremely well sounding Bluetooth receiver. So uh, actually, I went to take it out of the vehicle yesterday. We had 103 degrees uh, temperature here in Salt Lake City, just a really hot day. And I pulled this out of the little pocket that I have this mounted in underneath my um, my Alpine. And this thing was burning hot. I mean, it was just scorching because of that heat. So just for giggles, I fired it up, ran it through its paces, and it didn't skip a beat. I had the same excellent range, which is about 60 feet outdoors. Um, it didn't glitch. It didn't give me a problem with sound. I mean, this will work very well in a mobile environment. So if you're looking for a really 
nifty way to uh, get high-end Bluetooth into your car. This is the piece for you. And I'll do a video on that if you guys want. So pretty cool. All right, like I say, all the particulars, I'm gonna, I'm just going to put a link to this thing down below so you can get all the particulars. I'm not really a numbers guy. I think the thing sounded extremely well. Um, I think it was very natural sounding. It wasn't overextended in highs or lows, and it wasn't uh, uh, a bland sounding, sounding uh, unit in the low end frequency response either. So, And not harsh in the mids or anything like that. Just a very pleasant unit to listen to. I'm actually really surprised. Okay, so using my JBL Flip 5 as a receiver, I put the FIO into transmit mode, went back here in my room. This is a new standardized thing I'm doing. And basically through all the walls and the wiring, I got out to about the center of my garage. Now, yes, I can go further, but this is where it was a, a dependable signal. And that is about 50 feet. Now, using this as a receiver, so like if I'm going to stream from a cell phone to the FIO and then plug it into my home stereo, I've got my Marantz in my stereo uh, room right here. And this is in receive mode. So using an elderly iPhone, I got into here, just into my bedroom, and went through all the wiring and the walls and everything. And then using my Samsung S7, I took this path, as I always do, walk down the hall, come in here. The iPhone cut out here. I got a little bit more, just maybe two foot more range here with my Galaxy S7. But the iPhone overall doesn't really transmit as good as my S7 does. And I, you know, that's just an Apple thing, I guess, with that particular phone. So anyway, um, you know, a very realistic range of about 38 to 40 feet in that. So I'm going to give this an overall, both in transmit and receive in real world conditions, about 50 feet. And I, th I think that's pretty darn respectable. So I have no problem with that at all. So anyway, my, my last thoughts on the BTA 30, um, yeah, I wish I wasn't so closed-minded when I first heard about it. But then, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I waited because if they did have a manufacturing issue or, or a component um, issue, maybe with a supplier or something, um, they obviously remedied it because uh, it, my unit works uh, flawlessly. I'm very happy. All right, please leave questions or comments down below. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And let me know if you guys want to see uh, how I... Um, integrated this into the car and uh, I'll give you guys some ideas maybe uh, yeah maybe you could get some uh, usage out of this in the vehicle all right thanks for watching